With the uh, carburetor off the engine, um, the first step in cleaning this thing is to disassemble the carb, but this is also a good time to uh, inspect the, uh, the throttle butterfly um, and also the choke butterfly if you have one, it would be on the other side here. This carburetor doesn't have it, just has the uh, throttle butterfly. Just make sure it opens and closes easily without any restrictions. Also check the shaft for any play, um, should be very little play. And also it's a good time to check your uh, primer bulb. Um, make sure it's still somewhat flexible with no cracks. And uh, the first step in disassembling this carburetor is to remove this float bowl nut. And on this carburetor it's a half inch. Underneath the float bowl nut is a gasket which also comes off with the nut. And set that aside. Remove the float bowl and you probably have some gas in it, um, so just be aware of that. Remove the uh, float bowl gasket or o-ring. Just lifts off, set that aside. Um, holding this float to the carburetor body is a hinge pin. You need to remove this pin, just slides out. Set that aside. Then you can remove the float and uh, attached to the float will be the um, float needle take that off and set that aside. Inside uh, this uh, fuel inlet channel where the um, inlet needle fits or the float needle fits like this, um, there's a uh, inlet needle seat and I'll try and show you here. It's right in there you see the little hole there. Um, you gotta pull that out and uh, your rebuild kit should have a new one that you can insert there. Um, you can buy a special tool to get that out. Uh, some aftermarket tool maker makes it for Tecumseh carburetors. Or you can take a, uh, I've got a paper clip here and I've, I've kind of bent a little hook in the end here. And I'm going to insert that hook in the center of that uh, uh, inlet needle seat and pull it out. Like so. Try and do this on camera. But I'll work it down there. Um, insert it through the center of that seat and uh, pull it out like so that's a cheap way of uh, removing the seat I've pretty much taken off everything that needs to be taken off of this carburetor to clean it um, uh, Tecumseh uh, calls this carburetor a dual systems carburetor and the way you can ID these type of carburetors is one they're used on the uh, four, four cycle uh, vertical shaft lawnmower engines. They have a large primer bulb here on the side of the carburetor and they have no adjustment screws. Um, there's no idle mixture screw, there's no high speed adjustment screw so I don't need to worry about taking out any of the adjustment screws um, uh, for cleaning or uh, inspection. If your carburetor does have those two things, uh, you'll usually have the idle mixture screw here on the side and on the bottom of the carburetor where the uh, float bolt bolt attaches the float bolt to the carburetor, um, this bolt will be drilled out in the center and tapped and you'll have a screw, a high speed mixture screw that will fit in the this bolt here. Um, and you just need to take that out and uh, with these uh, adjustment screws there's usually um, a uh, o-ring you need to inspect, check it for cracks or tears and replace them if you find those and uh, just clean the tip of the uh, adjustment screw and then it's ready for it to be reassembled. Um, I'm not going to be using a carb cleaner to clean this carburetor because carb cleaner um, damages plastic and rubber parts. Uh, for example this 90 degree elbow here for the fuel inlet is plastic and carb cleaner can damage that and also this purge bulb is plastic and, and so I don't need to worry about, uh, I don't want to worry about getting carb cleaner on that because it can damage it. Um, <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to dunk these in a um, ultrasonic tank with a, a cleaning solution. Um, if, you're, if you want to use carb cleaner to clean this carb, uh, just focus the carb cleaner on the all metal parts like this float bowl, this float, um, this float uh, nut here. Uh, this inlet needle and uh, this float hinge, you can clean those all with uh, carb cleaner. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, I wouldn't spray carb cleaner on this part of the carb uh, unless you're sure you're not spraying it on, on any rubber parts. 
Before I transfer this stuff to the uh, uh, cleaning solution, um, I want to take my float and I want to check it for any leaks. And the way you check it for leaks is you just t shake it and listen for any liquid splashing around inside. If you find that, then, then the float is leaking and you want to replace the float. Um, but this one is good, so um, I can reuse that. Uh, you also want to take your uh, float uh, bowl nut that you took off. Um, there's little passages in this nut that need to be uh, cleaned. Um, I don't know if, let me see if I can zoom in on this. Like right there you can see a little hole there that needs to be cleaned. On this particular carburetor I think there's only one hole. And uh, the way that I can clean that is uh, if you have a wire brush or even a plastic brush with, with plastic um, uh, Brussels, 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 however you pronounce it. Um, like I got this wire brush here, I'm going to just take a pair of dikes and cut a piece of wire out off. Take the uh, wire, take my piece again. Let's see if I can zoom in. Find that hole and then uh, take my wire that I just cut off of the brush if I can grab it and uh, poke it through the hole and, and uh, make sure it's uh, free of any debris that might be clogging it and I only got one so I don't need to worry about that one this is the uh, ultrasonic cleaner I'll be using to clean the carburetor um, I threw all the p carburetor parts in there as you can see here, it's in a solution of water and simply green, and uh, it's heated. This this thing heats the solution. Um, I'm going to cycle this about four or five times with the ultrasonic cleaner on, and then I'm just going to let it set for a couple hours and, um, you know, just soak and, and clean these parts. And uh, when I'm done with that, I'll be back and uh, we'll reassemble the carburetor. Okay, I just uh, took these parts out of the um, ultrasonic cleaner. I rinsed them off and then I dried them off. Um, when I was rinsing this carburetor off, I noticed there's a there's a plastic piece inside of this. Uh, they call this the emulsion tube, and it's right here. This is exactly why I don't like to use carburetor cleaner on these parts, is because um, it's very possible that I, I would have sprayed this part and possibly ruined it, deformed it, and that would have just ruined the possibly ruined the carburetor. So. Also, don't blow compressed air in here because you'll blow out the um, primer bulb here. You can actually check the emulsion tube on your carburetor uh, to see if it's plugged up or clogged by using a flashlight. Uh, just take your flashlight, put it up against the carburetor uh, either end. Um, I'm using this open end, but if you got a, 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 ch a choke butterfly or choke valve on this end of the carburetor, um, just make sure when you put the flashlight up to the carburetor that you open up the uh, butterfly. But anyway, just uh, put it against the carburetor like this and um, turn the light on. And you should be able to see light there. And you can see that uh, that emulsion tube isn't, isn't clogged up. The uh, carburetor rebuild kit I got for this carburetor, um, it's uh, part number... 631021B and it, it doesn't contain everything. It has the uh, uh, float bowl seal or gasket, has the inlet needle uh, uh, seat, has the uh, inlet needle and uh, the float bowl uh, nut gasket. Um, my other option was to get a bigger kit but it had a lot of parts in there that uh, won't fit this carburetor so um, I ended up just getting this which is it's just plenty to get this carburetor clean and, and working correctly. The first thing I want to do when to reassemble this carburetor is to install my um, inlet needle seat. Uh, there's two sides to this inlet needle seat. One side is relatively smooth and the other side is, is kind of ribbed. You want the rib side of this seat to go down and I'll try and show you that on video, what that seat looks like. This is the uh, rib side of the seat. Um, this is the side you want to go down. You can see there it's not smooth. And if you turn that over, um, this is relatively smooth other than this little number here. But this is the part, the side of this, the seat you want to make contact with your inlet needle or float needle. So um, I'm going to reinstall this with uh, this side down. 
Uh, to reinsert this uh, inlet needle seat, uh, you can either use a, a 5 30 seconds drill bit, use the uh, end of the drill bit, the part that's not uh, used for cutting, and, or you can use a 5 30 seconds uh, flat punch. I'm going to use the punch. Um, Tecumseh recommends adding a little bit of oil to the, the seat. Um, I've installed it without using the oil, so I'm going to put it in there the right way, make sure the rib part of the seat is facing down. And then uh, take your punch and press it in until it doesn't go in any further. And right there. Next I want to install my inlet needle or a float needle. I want to take my uh, new inlet needle. Um, there's a clip that goes. you have to clip onto it. Uh, see if you can see this. It's this thing. And um, it goes on here like this. and just clips on the end of this uh, inlet needle like so and when I install this I want this open end to be facing um, where the air filter fits on the carburetor which would be uh, this end so um, it will fit in here like so uh, like this so we want to take our inlet needle and our clip on the needle and uh, install it on the float on this, install it uh, over this tang here on the float. This is also used to adjust the float height uh, by bending this tang either out or in. And I'll show you how to do that, uh, how to check the float height uh, next. But you, you install this uh, inlet needle clip on the float tang like this. And then um, install that on the carburetor like so. Make sure that opened end is facing the uh, where the air filter goes. like that and then uh, install the uh, hinge pin and then that's what it looks like you can see you can see it moving up and down when the float goes up and down when the level of the gas changes like so now to uh, check the make sure that the level of this float is correct um, you want to go to the opposite uh, not side, but the opposite, 180 degrees from this uh, hinge pin, which would be right here. Um, just let the float rest come to a rest like this. Take a 1164 uh, drill bit, and you should just barely be able to. Uh, should just fit kind of like this between the carburetor body and the float. When it's like this, it's adjusted to the right level. And I think all Tecumseh carburetor float type carburetors. Um, float level height is 11 64ths of an inch. Next thing we need to install is our float bolt gasket or seal. Um, this is a new one. And uh, fit it into place like so. And uh, make sure our uh, hinge pin for the float is centered. And then we can reinstall our float bowl. Um, there, the float bowl is stepped like like so, if you can see here, the step down. You want this step down to be um, where the, uh, right over top of the, of the hinge pin like this. So it would fit on here just like this. And then uh, maneuver it into place. Next, take the uh, float bolt nut. Um, I've already put on the new gasket. And um, Screw this into place, half an inch, half an inch socket and tighten it down. Not too tight, but just, uh, you know, snug. Like so. So that's how you uh, clean and rebuild a Tecumseh uh, lawnmower carburetor. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Uh, and in the next video, I will go ahead and reinstall this and start up the mower. Hope you found this video helpful and thank you for watching.